but let's go back to the person who breaks through and stands on the stage that had metastatic carcinoma from uh, breast cancer. Cancer spread throughout her entire body. All she wanted to do was be able to pray again. Her father dragged her to the event. And all she wanted to do was be able to get on her knees and pray. She's a young girl. Couldn't bend over, couldn't walk. She was in so much pain because the cancer was spread through all of her spine. One moment, one moment she was on the stage, couldn't feel any pain in her body, sobbing in tears. I sent her for um, a PET scan. Not an ounce of cancer in her bones. Where, where did it go? I mean, what happened there? You see that person on the stage, and our community gets closer. You get people opening their heart. Love bonds. You can't not bond in love. You have to hug. You have to connect. You have to bond. It's, it's whether you're a man hugging a man, a woman hugging a woman, a man hugging a woman, something happens where we are connecting. And so when you see that person, the first one, stand on the stage and tell that story, just like an infection can spread amongst the community and create disease, all of a sudden health and wellness are as infectious as disease. And I just say to my staff, get out of the way. Four people with Raynaud syndrome in one event all heal. Two people with Parkinson's, psychiatrist and another lady, another lady allergic to everything in her life, she, she came with a ventilator and a mask. And in the middle of the event, she's in front, of the, in the front of the room dancing around, no math, no nothing. When you start seeing people freeing themselves from their own limitations, the energy in the room, it's not just the energy in the room, it's the coherence in the room. Because if your heart is coherent, and I'm sitting right next to you, and my field is coherent, and I'm interfering with your field, and those two fields come together, the union of those two fields, the interference is going to create a higher wave. Higher wave, higher energy. <laughs> now there's energy in the room for healing. Now there's an energy in the room for the mystical. And the interference starts creating doors. Interference patterns of fractal geometry that are doors to dimensions. And you tell me then, you get a group of people, a thousand people in a room. You have 50 people in the front of the room wearing a heart rate monitor. By the middle of the event, everybody is locked into their heart. They know how to execute. And I say, get in that heart of yours, and on that energy, lay the thought that the people in the front of the room on that energy, that their lives be enriched, that their bodies be healed, that their dreams come true. And you explain to me then how all those people in the front of the room, the majority of those people go into heart coherence at the exact same time, the exact same day, and the exact same meditation. They're, they're influencing their autonomic nervous system. The collective is entraining them into the same frequency. And what is that frequency? Love, gratitude, hopefulness for the greatest good. And so then, the collective then moves as one mind, as one heart. And the collective begins to entrain the weak. The collective begins to care for the other ones that are falling behind, not because they want to run through their dream but because they want to help people realize their dream because that's important to them. It's just, you can't not care. You can't not be present. You can't not be kind. And, and uh, you see a man show up in a wheelchair from a stroke, completely disabled. His daughter wheeled him around that whole event. And he had a profound moment the very last day. And he went back. She wheeled him into the house. He could walk. He got up in the morning, he showered for the first time in 10 years, got dressed, walked. His wife was having breakfast. He walked down to the, to the store, to the, to the restaurant, and asked if he could, she, he could sit down and have breakfast. She went absolutely crazy. To me, I don't know, there's, that's better than a sports car. That feeling to me is, is worth all the gold in the world. So we have people now that I have witnessed so many profound healings where people are healing other people because they know how to administer coherence and change the field of the person laying before them. They understand the science, the quantum physics. They understand all what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then all of a sudden, they're healing all these people in our events. Tumors disappearing, people stepping out of wheelchairs, crazy blind people seeing, deaf people hearing, crazy stuff. You, 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 this is biblical proportion stuff. 
Now they're doing it non-locally because they can't be together, but they understand in the quantum there's no separation. They can do it without being there. And they're not doing it. I, I've dropped in on these calls. They're not doing it because they want to hang a shingle on their door saying, I'm a healer. In fact, they got to get beyond that in order to heal. They got to get beyond that identity. They're doing it because they're healing themselves every time they connect to love. And so, that person then, whose daughter was riddled with a, a brain injury from a child that never looked at her brothers, never was present, never could talk, was, was still and frozen, who's now looking at her brothers and laughing and hugging them and smiling and trying to talk. We're on the, we're on the call of 50 people and two scientists from a prestigious university, and this woman is telling the story and everybody is sobbing. Everybody is sobbing. Why? We contribute to the living organism. You made a difference. You changed somebody's life. That's why we do it for that feeling. You keep doing it. That's going to be a common feeling. You're going to get really sensitive to, a, to some energy, to some feeling. That's what it's about. People try to work their whole week in opening their heart at a week-long event. Comes time to heal another person. Now it's no longer about them. And they, they, they get it. They get it. All they had to do was open their heart for somebody else. That's how it opens. So then we, we have it backwards. That when we start regulating and feeling wholeness and love, and we practice that on a daily basis, the master goes unnoticed walking past somebody and healing. They don't, they don't want to be recognized. Not doing it for recognition. They left that a long time ago. They're doing it because they want to execute. They want to, they, they want to know the right time, the right moment, the right second to be able to do it. So I'm proud of my our community. Because our community is connected. It's I never want this work to be about me. If it's about me, it's the wrong thing. I want it to be about them. I want them to be empowered and inspired. I'm not going to give them, tell them what to do. I would never do that. I would rob them of their free will. I want them to be able to execute with the tools to be able to create the life they want. And as you get closer and closer to source, to singularity, to wholeness, it's no longer about you. It's about us. It's about community. And, and that's when uh, we begin to emerge as something greater. And you are what you practice. You practice being a victim, you're going to get really good at it. <laughs> you're going to get really great at it. You practice being a master or a mystic. Keep practicing, walk as it, talk as it, sit as it, surrender to it, become more of it and less of you. You're going to start having wacky things happen in your life. And you're not going to be able to explain that to your priest. You're not going to be able to explain that to the person who's the governor of your, of your province. You're not going to be able to explain that to your doctor, although Wow, what an amazing time. We have so many physicians that come to our work now. We have so many doctors, oncologists referring their people, their patients, because they understand that if they can't get beyond their emotions and their analytical mind, they are not going to heal. So, the idea that people can create a better life for themselves, to begin to change their body. In order for them to change their body, they got to get beyond their body. Because if their body's trying to change their body, it's just going to take a long time. It's just going to take time. And so when that person has that inner interaction with the divine, they get a biological upgrade. And that upgrade then is instantaneous. And that instantaneous change causes them to take a piece of the divine back here into three-dimensional reality. We take a piece of it with us. So imagine every day you started your day with a date with the divine. Now, I don't know about you. I mean, you have a beautiful wife, but <laughs> I don't think you would want to miss a date with her too often. I don't. Yeah, you wouldn't. And so what is the difference between a date with the divine? If you're going to make a date, show up. And when you show up, don't complain and beg it for things and complain to it. And who would, would you want to be around that? The divine would just be like, oh my God, <laughs> mean it. 
in love. Meet it with passion. Meet it. When your mind matches its mind, when your will matches its will, when your love for life matches its love for life, it is getting really close to you. And, and, and when it occurs, all the things you thought you wanted, you no longer want because you no longer feel like you need them any longer. So then the game changes once again. So what an amazing time in history. I mean, amazing time uh, to wake up.